Hello my good friends, how are you? My name is Ari Therger and today I'm going to give you a quick note on the god Thir and Odin. Who was the real main Germanic god? This was a question posed by one of my patrons, Mr. Wagner Chaseman. I've given my answer to him on the Patreon platform months ago, but I think this is a very good question and I wanted to share with all of you here on YouTube. You may have heard quite often that there is a good chance that the main Germanic god has been Thir for a long time and the position of this Germanic deity in the Germanic pantheon and his importance in the Germanic society was later assumed by Odin in a more recent period in history. So let's start by understanding the meaning behind the name Thir so we might have a better perception of the historical background of this Germanic deity and the changes in the religious background. Thir is the Old Norse Scandinavian name for the Germanic god of the sky, war and council. The god known as Thiwas. Uh, this is the only Germanic god who was already important in Indo-European times. Uh, the most famous among pre-Roman Germanic peoples. And this fact alone already helps us to identify Tyr as the main Germanic god of hold and not Odin. Tyr or Tig is the Anglo-Saxon equivalent of Tiwas, who was identified by Germanic peoples as being identical with the Roman god Mars, god of war, as is confirmed by the translation of the weekday name Tis Marti by Anglo-Saxon Tiswistak or Tiwistak, Tuesday. Old Norse Tirstag, Old High German Dingenstag, probably derived from another form of Tiwas, found in the name Mars Tingsus. Tiwas was the Germanic god of war, the skies and the thing, the assembly, the council, also known in Old High German as Ziu. This deity is the equivalent of Old Indian Dewas, Greek Zeus, Latin Jupiter, as well as Old Indian Deva, Old Irish Tia, Latin Dei, Old Norse Thivar, plural form of Thir, meaning gods. These are all closely related etymologically to each other and all of them referring to god or deity. Thiwas was the god of the Germanic peoples. Whatever notions neo-pagans try to pass on about the ancient pagan societies of old as societies without a hierarchical structure and everything was fair and equal rights, it wasn't the case at all. Pre-Roman Germanic and Celtic societies were highly hierarchical, so in the religious sphere it was likewise. There was a main god, be that father of the gods or simply the chieftain of the gods. Tiwas was such a god. He was the divine representation of the chieftain of the clan or the tribe, who was seen as both the religious and military leader, as well as the administrator of justice. Therefore, Tiwas was the ruler god, god of war, god of justice, and a solar deity. This is why in Scandinavia later on, in terms of burial practices according to the afterlife destinations, kings, Jarls and Hersirs, lords, go to Tyr's hall, Balaskjalf. Tyr's name, Tyr Tuoti Di, means the god or the lord, and it is he, not Odin, who leads the forces of Asgard during Ragnarok. In the old Scandinavia, in the old Scandinavia especially during the Viking period, Tyr is seen as the god of the art of war, like Athena, and that trait continued to be maintained. He was also the god of victory, which is why many of his representations depict him with, uh, standing with his hands stretched out. Uh, and he holds Suna, the sun, and Mane, the moon, in his hands. But this representation is more noticeable in Baldr, but we will get there. The sun hand later on in the myths gets beaten off by the great wolf Fenris, or Fenrir. And it's important to take notice that in the myth of Ragnarok, the sun will be devoured by a wolf, 
which shows us this older reference to the myth of Thir losing his hand to Fenrir. Not only being the representation of Thir having been the god and the solar deity, but also because the loss of the hand used for swearing oaths is documented in many cultures as a punishment for perjury, as a form of administrating justice, reinforcing the trait of Thir as a god of justice, the divine solar deity of power, rulership and justice. Christian priests were responsible for mixing up Thir and Odin, god of the battle rage, as in the old scriptures and stories their names are not used. Instead, secondary names were used, for instance, Ogbard, Greybeard for Odin, and Sigthir, victory god for Thir, and also Kiningar or Kinnings were also used, uh, for, for instance, the fair god for Baldr and the white horse, Heimdall, etc., are used in older accounts instead of the names of the gods. It is most likely that Baldr or Baldr is the son of Thir and not of Odin, as Baldr in runes would be pronounced Baldir or Baldir, meaning new or renowned, renewed god or lord. The church equalized Thir with God and his son Baldr as Christ as like Christ, Baldr will be resurrected during Ragnarok. In Scandinavia, Thir lost his importance as Odin came into the religious panorama and progressively gained more ground and more importance and became known as the Old Father, Alfadir. Later on in Iceland, during the 13th century, during the Catholic period of Iceland, already a period far away from the Viking Age, not only geographically, but with a accentuated cultural distance, Odin became the Old Fadir and the father of all the gods. Snorri Sturluson, in his Prose Adam, even states that Thir is the son of Odin, even though this is never attested anywhere else, because to the Christians it was Odin that had been the father of all uh, in the distant pagan past and not Thir. Uh, this is simply due to the introduction of the cult of Odin in the north and he became the deity who absorbed the other local deities in Scandinavia, which is why Odin has more than a hundred names. Those are probably the names of older local gods incorporated into the cult of Odin. Hudenas was the Germanic god of battle rage and ecstasy, not the god or a shifton of the gods, not even a god of justice or a solar deity. Udanas was a god of death and battle frenzy. There were many names for this deity, for instance, to the Lombards he was named Godan. Uh, Germanic peoples were divided in, into many tribes and none subscribed to the same religious ideas, but to similarities within the religious panorama. Some worshipped Godan and Udanas more often than others, depending if they were tribes more warlike or not. But it is clear that to them, Tiwaz was the main god, the creator, the solar god, the war god, the god of justice and so on. But as Germanic tribes progressively became more warlike, especially with the Roman invasions, there was the need to worship a deity more related to death and war ecstasy and battle rage. A battle frenzy. Tiwaz was progressively, progressively put aside and Godan, Udanas, Wotan, Weiden gained more ground. With the Germanic invasions in Scandinavia, this deity was brought and changed the entire religious panorama and became the main deity worshipped by the local elites, by kings and nobles during the Scandinavian Iron Age, just a few centuries before the Viking period. This god in Scandinavia became Odin. Tiwas was the god of the Germanic peoples, but his importance diminished with the increasing Germanic migrations, bringing their different gods to different places. And in the new places they settled, the main god became another. Odin became the god of the Scandinavians, as Germanic peoples settled in Scandinavia. 
just in the same way Donar Pur became the god of the Anglo-Saxons when Saxons settled in Britannia. It's clear that Freyr was the god of the southern Swedes, for instance, and that before the cult of Odin who was introduced in Scandinavia, most likely their main god was Ulr, at least for Norwegians, or rather a god whose name was forgotten but was the equivalent of Ulr. The divine pair of Scandinavia might have been Ulr and Skadi, but that's a subject for another time and for another video. Alright my dear friends, I hope you have enjoyed this video and I'm sorry if today I went a little bit faster than usual, but I really have no time to waste, I'm sorry. Uh, my life right now is a complete madness, I just came from work and the spare time I have is to record a video and do everything really fast. So once again, thank you so much for watching, see you on the next video and as always, talk really.